by the belief that I'm not good enough, bound by the limitations and the lies that consumed my world, this was me. It wasn't until I took the biggest leap in my life to know and trust the power within. And it was at that moment I made a choice. My past will not define me anymore. Hello, I am Terry Cargula, and I know I am not alone in this. Over the years, I have found that the number one mistake that we make is that we get in the way of our own success story. Yes, I said it. On this show, together we'll tackle limiting beliefs, self-sabotage, getting stuck, fear, doubt, overwhelm, and the imposter syndrome. Join us on this journey designed to transport you beyond your limitations to a world where anything is possible. This is Talking with Terry. Hello and welcome back to Talking with Terry, where we have powerful conversations to transform your life and your business. And ooh, are you in for a treat today? I have our friend here, Sophie Sheesh. She's a psychologist by trade. She's founded an effective project management system, driving massive results, including her own success story. She's created a 9 million revenue company with a staff of 250 in under five years with 10 locations in LA and New York. I mean, just impressive. And she has a whole list of yummy things. I'm just gonna jump down to some other juicy things, okay? I think I was joking before we started today. I said, I hope this is you. Um, and if not, we're running with it because it's killer, okay? I'm just amazing what you've created and, and achieved in your life. Um, her work has been featured on Ellen, Good Day America, E, the, the Today Show, Billboard, New York Times, LA Times, TEDx, and da 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 da, and more and more and more. Okay, she's like, a, <laughs> like a Santa's list that just keeps going. Um, and she did all of this actually doing less. So I'm curious. So, so welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. I love your intro. I should talk to you every Monday morning, or just give me up, <laughs> give me a good boost for the week. <laughs> thank you. I love it. Okay, well, okay. So I always love, um, you know, just hearing people's stories, you know, and it's almost like what we were talking about offline is, you know, if we were having this conversation, we're meeting for the very first time and I just get to know all the juiciness about you, like, you know, and people get to listen in, like, tell me about how you got to where you're at today. It's probably the biggest question anyone's you know, ever asked such me. Such a loaded question. Summarize I would like, like you to do it in years. under two minutes or less, please. <laughs> <laughs> and doing it in a different language. Um, so yes, I was born in France um, and grew up in Spain. So that is one of my uh, juiciness in life is that I get to connect with people in different languages, actually, since we're talking about juicy. Well, what got me here, when you asked the question, I was really, I tapped, I dropped into something that I wasn't expected, actually, which is not from the business world exactly, but um, I used to be 350 pounds and I've lost somewhere in the vicinity of 150 of them. And that is, that it's, it's an obstacle, it's a, it's a gift. It's, um, the journey was incredible, you know, trying to fix that. I was always, you know, entrenched in conversations and workshops and trainings and all sorts of things to try to resolve that. And uh, in the course of resolving it, really, I discovered me, you know, in the middle of all this and hiding under the layers and layers of weight, actually. And so that is one of my, that's a, that's a beautiful piece of the journey, I would say. I think that, um, you know, I think that even if folks have not experienced, you know, you know, hiding from weight, but I think that we can generalize this to people hiding in general, you yeah. know, like, you know, what is that one thing that we're hiding from, you know, yeah. internally, externally, what is that one thing that we're running from and hiding from? It's just, I think we that's all a, have that's something. A, I think that's we a all have something. Yeah, we both want to jump in. It's a profound question. Like I, I, I used to smoke like a lot. I quit when I was 22, which in French, you know, people smoke younger probably than here. And I was up to like three packs a day. And oh, it's wow. funny that you say hiding because part of what happened when I quit was this sense of like, oh, there's this the wall between me and people at all times, right? Like when you smoke, there's a screen, like a, like I'm on this side, like you can't really see me, right? And so- Wow, that's, that's really profound, yeah. That is, hiding is, uh, I think we hide from our own feelings. I think we hide from, we taught not to be sad and certainly not to be angry. And as little girls, you know, be pretty, shut up of sorts, you know? And I think we, I remember the beginning of the weight loss came from 
being in the refrigerator, I was having these like frenzies at night, just eating a lot. And one day I went to do my little descent in hell in my refrigerator. And I, and I was asked by my body. I mean, I still don't know where it came from, you know, where are we inspired from? It's also a big question, but I remember hearing like, you can eat everything you want, but can you please feel your feelings first? And I, and I was like, I don't know how to do that. Like, how do, how does one do that? And I think our culture has developed all sorts of paraphernalia to not feel, you know, alcohol and gambling and porn and, you know, you name it. It's like everyone has developed a way to not be with oneself. And I, I think we should come back to that. Yeah. A little and bit. I think you're, you're absolutely right. Right. And, and, and we can connect it, being, you're being a, pro, a formal psychologist. I was a formal therapist. And so I understand like, you know, again, like all the addictions, all those kind of vices that we have, they all have a common denominator. Um, when we look at it and the, and the common denominator is changes the way we feel, right? Yes. It, it removes us. It, it removes us from it, ourselves. Yeah. It, it, it changes the way we feel. And so, you know, it's, it's, um, it's tantalizing because it can, it can, it's addictive, you know, and we can get into those habits of, you know, just escaping from, you know, our emotions and feeling and knowing and trusting. And, and I even go back to, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with our emotions, right? It's if we really understand the, what a, per, what the purpose of emotions are, yeah. they're really just our internal guidance system. I mean, yeah. they're here to help us. They're here to support us. They're here to keep us away from, you know, something that's unsafe. It's keeping, it's helping us to move forward to something that's going to, you know, support us and bring us more joy and more happiness and more fulfillment. And so it is here to help us. Um, but I think, you know, going back to, you know, just again, our scripts, you know, what was the stories? What was the, you know, what was, you know, you know, the information that we received, how did we make sense of that? And then yeah. how did we create that? So I'm curious in your weight loss journey, kind of, as you said, you know, I was hiding and even, even from smoking, you know, that hiding sensation, you know, did you, did you ever find kind of the root cause of what was contributing to, and it might not have been one, but it, you know, what were some of the things that were creating, you know, that for you? Yeah. I, funny enough, I just came back from recording the audio version of my book, who's coming out next year and it's called war and piece of cake um and it, it is about that journey and my family of origin was complicated you know the boundaries were not respected um my father was someone who derived a lot of his own life force from some relationship with you know younger people and um, there was a lot of sexual charge where I grew up. Like there was a lot of like, she's my girlfriend. No, she's your daughter. <laughs> you know, so I think gaining a lot of weight was a way to, I had this vision not long ago about how when a body gets really big or a body gets really skinny, there is almost like a drop of your shape. You know, it's like you, a very skinny woman or a very skinny man look alike and a very large woman and a very large man look alike. It's like it, 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 it removes, right. The, what makes the, the difference of the bodies and the, wow. the genders in some ways. And so I never looked at it that way, but that makes a lot of sense. I think I wanted to not attract attention that way. I wanted to be liked for other reasons. I wanted to be smart and funny and you know, I didn't want to be liked for my body or, I mean, all, all sorts of stories to probably fear, probably hiding from not being safe, you know, like feeling like I, I, I wouldn't know what to do with myself, you know, when I would attract the kind of attention you attract when you're sexy or exposed or, you know, more horrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, I mean, if I go deep, that's kind of where that was. Wow. And, and as you healed that, um, and, and if I understood this correctly, um, when I was, you know, stalking you, um, <laughs> we, um, <laughs> you actually ended up making a television show out of your weight journey. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a, it's more, it's more like a conversation. It's similar to what we're doing right now, uh, except I sat with them because it was pre COVID, but I interviewed um, somewhere in the vicinity of 45 people. And the conversation started from where, if I came to your dinner table when you were 10, 
what would I have seen? And what was the vibe? And what was the, so you had the little girl who feeds herself from a tuna can and you had the giant family where everybody's fighting and you had, you know, like what happened when we were forming our relationship with food and what was going on at the table. And in my case, there was a lot of anxiety. There was a lot of undiscussed stuff yeah. between them, you know, and and there was a lot of behaviors that I was having in school that required some sort of scolding at the dinner table. And so, and then there was the news and there was the dishwasher noise, you know, like a lot of not Emotion, be together. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think everyone was playing a different role in that dynamic, but everyone was trying to avoid feeling stressed, feeling unhappy, maybe not wanting to be there. You know, there was, there was just a lot of things that were not spoken and people think that because they don't speak it, it doesn't show, but you know, it leaks, it leaks in like the way people talk and the way people hum and the way people whistle and the way people chew their food, you know, super intensely. And so, yes, the, doc the documentary is conversations with people that are, I think, the lighter ones. The woman was 87 pounds at the minimum she was. And wow. the most, um, other than me, was uh, someone who had gone up to like 500 pounds. So it was really, it wasn't to focus on one particular um, dysfunctional behavior. It was just like, we even had people that supposedly had no problem with food. Like one of them was very athletic, you know, very, you would never think there was anything going on, except at night she was downing um, gummy bears. She had like boxes of gummy bears in her closet. And so at the dinner table, she would behave like, you know, cool and everything's relaxed and I'm eating my little green beans. And, and then she would, you know, just, just nurture herself from a sweet, you know, kind of desperate place a bit. And she told, she, a lot of people told incredible stories of, the raw, the complicated, you know, the, the painful, the, that happens with our food. Yeah. You have, you have created such an incredible, successful journey and how, I mean, in life and business, right? Like you've, you've, you've taken this and this is, I, I just truly believe all of our experiences that we've had create the fabric of, of us, right? It brings yes. us you know, to this place of, you know, I think our journeys are to, to bring us to this place of being whole and complete. Right. And whatever that looks like for each person. Right. Yeah. And you've incorporated, and now you've, you've done some powerful things in your business and grown your business. So I would love to know, like, what's been the secret sauce beyond, you know, your business and growing that. Cause that's truly remarkable. A $9 million business in five years, um, is really a, a straight up, you know, trajectory for that. It was a pretty deep trajectory. There was an investor there in the middle, which helped, you know, the, the concept yeah. of the company was very successful and, you know, it, it, it attracts people like success, you know, so it attracts um, people that want to be part of a journey that's already proven to be successful. I think the secret sauce, as you're asking, I really went deeper than my usual, you know, like I, I don't do talking points very much, but what came up was um, I care. I care really deeply. I, I remember when I was a consultant, I was working for this very large organization um, in France, actually. And um, this guy I was working with, he was like, how do you make people like think that you care so much? And I remember sitting there going like, I actually care. <laughs> like you don't make people think that you care. I actually yeah. do. And, and I think it's the secret, you know, like people that have worked with me or worked for me or built companies with me, there was this deep connection and this care of wanting to make a difference. And maybe it's a little cliche, but to, to participate in something where people um, really together want to do something better really is very powerful. And of course, there's lots of work and long hours and there is no, there's no escaping from that, that I know of, you know, yeah. but there is a way, and that is my new, that new venture that I'm in now, which is called Be Current, which is a system to help people be more productive and productive is not do more stuff. A lot of people yeah. they just want to check more boxes or, you know, achieve more stuff, but they don't necessarily connect it to what's really meaningful to them. And so a lot of my work from being a psychologist comes from like, what's the root of what makes us do what we do? 
And, and why do I commit to things I don't really want to do? And why am I spending half my days, I have my life, half my life, where I don't really respect the people I work with, or I don't really care about the job I do? So yes, there is economics, you know, important elements to why we work. And of course, money being one of them. And so I'm not saying we should all be la la la, do whatever we want, but there's definitely a lot of unconscious um, behaviors we have when we say yes to things. Like yeah. that's one of my big things. Like what, what are you saying yes to and why? And is it really a no? And you just don't know how to say that. Like a lot of people I work with, and they are top executives, they've achieved, you know, like, like you, from the outside, it looks like, wow, like the resume is long. And yet they sit there unable to say no. Like someone comes to them I, and they're like, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, I am so great that, girl, that we're talking about this because I think this is such an issue for a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of women. And yes. For the women entrepreneurs, I'm sorry, you're hosed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I think that like, I think that there's this people pleasing tendency. Yeah. And I think, and I know, I remember what I used to be a yes person, you know, and yeah. I used to be like, yes, I, I can do that. I can do that. And, you know, the old saying at, it goes, you know, if you want something done, ask a busy person, right? Yeah. Because a busy person will get stuff done. Like yeah. I won't take things on, but when you start to, you, you, you start to say yes to everything. Yeah. And it takes you off your path and it's, you're saying yes to distractions. And I will be the first to say that like, there's, there's times that I can there. I love sparkly things like, right. Like I, I mean, opportunities, excitement. I mean, it doesn't matter what it Tiny is. Tiny objects. I could be walking through the mall and be like, Oh, you know, and I yeah. get distracted. Right. Like yeah. I know that's about me. I know that I love like newness. I love like, right. But I also have to stay focused mm -hmm. and say yes to what means yes. And so I actually have this idea book. It's literally a journal and has all these ideas. And I mean, we're always generating ideas, but it literally, I, the idea will go into the book. So don't forget it. And I'll write it out. And if it, and I probably have, a, I don't know, probably 2000 ideas in there. And maybe three of them will make it into this lifetime into mm -hmm. fruition, mm -hmm. but at least I have a document and I don't have it, you know, and if not, like, it's not, okay, it's not, it's not, it's not resonating with me. It's not bringing me joy. It's not in alignment with what I'm doing or creating. And so I can, you know, that's a tool that I've been using to say, you know, okay, what, what means yes and what means no. But I also use um, kinesthetics, um, mm -hmm. like kinesi kinesiology. And, you know, I, and I'm testing it with the energy because I, I, love can, that. Okay, <laughs> I can say yes to what means yes and no to what means no. And usually it doesn't mean that we don't have to, if we say no, it doesn't mean that it's not going to ever not be a part of it. It's just timing. Um, I remember um, I've shared this on here before, so I apologize for the repeat story, but my mom used to collect salt and pepper shakers. It was a sort of thing. We lived in the Midwest. I think everyone collected something and we had a designated room for her salt and pepper shakers. I'm not kidding you. And it was a pretty good size room. It was a rectangle shaped room. And I bet it was, you know, I don't know, 16 feet by, well, maybe less than that. Maybe that's 12 feet by, I don't know, nine feet wide. And so it was a decent sized room. And along those, all along every single sh side of the room, there were these little tiny shelves that were like three inches that stuck out. <clears throat> and then they were varying heights. So some were obviously shorter for shorter salt and pepper shakers and longer, whatever. And in my head, I have like put in like that room of shelves, right? And I feel like there's so many opportunities that we have. And sometimes I just tell people, sometimes they go back on the shelf and it's just a timing thing. And they're still there. We can still be aware of it. But then when it's ready, there's an energy to it. It's a, it's a, it, it lights up. It gets, you know, becomes juicy. It becomes like, ooh, I get energized by it. And we match the vibration to that. And then we're like, okay, it's ready. It's ripe. It's, we'll pull this one off the shelf and we'll engage in it, right? And when we follow that timing, oh my goodness, I find that that's been kind of a magic a magic um, secret sauce, if you will, to building a business. And when we're in that alignment with it, it just, it just goes. Yeah. I find the inner yes or no always was easy for me. Well, always, I don't know, but in my adult recent life that I remember the one that's harder for people. And sometimes for me is we, we want to be liked, you know, we want yeah. to have people. So they come to us like, Hey, do you want to build furniture with me this weekend? And in my head, I'm going, well, I'm writing a book. I probably should be writing my book. And yes, of course I'll come build furniture with you this weekend. Like how would that come from, you know? And 
I, I, I think it's a matter of self-esteem and confidence and knowing what my yeses are. It's easier to say no to other things. You can say no kindly. Like I, I, you know, some people don't know how to do that. Like they don't have the art of, um, they either say yes because they don't know how to say no, or they say no in a way that's like really rejecting and, and not very kind. And I find that line to be super interesting to search, you know, like where is this, um, where is that line? You know, like how do I stay a good friend and a supportive friend and not necessarily spend all my weekends building furniture with them? <laughs> Right. No, I agree. I agree with you. And, and I think sometimes if we just pause and say, you know, a lot of times it's so unconscious, right. And we just say, yes, but we're like, wait, well, like what? So I think sometimes if we can just start to reprogram our default mode yeah, and, and it's just taking a pause, we're not saying yeah. yes or no, you know, just pause it. Let me get say, back you know to you on that. Let <laughs> me get back to you. Let me, you know what, let me look at my calendar. Let me look at a couple things you know, I live by my calendar and um, everyone knows this. And I might, and I'm, that's always like, you know what, let me look at my calendar, you know, let me consult with that because that makes sense. But that gives me time yeah. to go back and do a couple things. One is, is this in alignment with my values? Is yeah. this in, my, in alignment with my targets for the year? Is this in alignment with, you know, my intentions? Cause I usually do like this, you know, word of the year and like setting my intentions for the year. Like do all of these three things come in alignment and if it's a yes, and if I have extra time, I want to help someone out. I'm like, yeah, you know, because it fills my bucket too, because I feel like oh. it's also your values. Exactly. You know? Like if it fits in your values, yeah. to be generous. And one, of my, one of my values is having fun. And I engage, I typically try to engage fun wherever I go, um, because it's not fun. I'm not going to, I'm not going to probably should join, right? Like I'm just, just not, because it's not one of my values. It's not one of my, you know, you know, things that I care about, you know? So, um, but I think it's important for us to just say, start to reprogram the default mode and just taking up time to pause. And there's, there's no rightness or wrongness of that, you know, just giving yourself permission to say, you know what, let me get back to you. Give, give a 24 hour, you know, kind of period, because then you can come back and there's ways in which you can say it, you know, like you said, like saying it nicely and just saying, you know what, gosh, I would love to. However, however, you know, no. I remember, I remember one time I was asking this person something that I asked them to do something for, I don't know if it, it was before podcasting. So I'm not really sure what it was. And, and I, and I just loved her response because it was just, you know what I'm, and she said, and she was pretty direct, but I was okay with that. Cause I'm, I can be direct too. And I, I didn't take offense to it, but she was like, you know what? I have a certain, um, I have certain targets and goals. I think she said for the year, and this falls outside of my, that my targets and goals. So I would love to revisit this at another time because maybe it would become in alignment with that. And I just thought it was a great way of saying it um, that like, you know, that made sense. That's funny. That bounces back to a, a story of, um, I had a, a person who worked with me like an executive assistant a few years ago, and I gave her that many things to do and then some more and then again. And, and then one evening she came and we were finishing our day and she, she showed me this list and she said, all right, so you've asked me to do these seven things and I have time to do five, like, which ones would you like to, you know, for me to do? And I remember sitting there going like, oh, yes, because otherwise you build resentments and you do the work not well. And then you, wow. you start like being exhausted, which is who wants to work with people that are, you know, exhausted all the time. Like I wanted my people and my staff, you know, to, to feel like they're happy to come to work, you know, and yeah, there's, there's um, the, the Hendrix, Gay and Katie Hendrix, which have written many books, including The Big Leap, which is one of my favorite books of all times. And they often talk about this idea of um, the full body yes, and, and which is even bigger than just the normal yes, right? It's like, it's like, are you really like you're talking about juicy, you know, it's like, is this something that really, really lights you up? And when it comes the time to do it in two weeks, so let's say right now I look at my calendar and it's like, oh, two weeks, it looks like really open. Well, in two weeks, it won't be because it will have, right? It will have piled up with a lot of other things. Like, will I want to get up and go do that? And if the answer is no, that's my criteria. Like if I imagine, you know, you and I want to have lunch and it's going to be in two weeks. It's like, if right now it doesn't excite me, it won't excite me in two weeks. There's no chance. I love so that. To that's follow, a great point. Yeah. A great point. And when you talk about that full body, yes. I mean, a lot of times when we were tapped in and tuned into, we can feel that I, I get chills. I'm like, yes, yes. I don't care what it is. Like I got yeah. full body chills. Like we're doing it. And they're like, okay. Yes. And I'm like, no, I, I know like, this is it, you know, yes. and so really committing to those full yeses. And I love what you just said, because I think, you know, we, we, you know, regrettedly, you know, kind of 
I don't know what the word is, but we kind of, we say yes, because we think it's going to be, the energy is going to shift around it. And sometimes it could, but often, most often it doesn't. (laughs) Intent is there. I remember long ago, there was a networking company and I love the networking company and I love what they stand for. I love everything about them, but they had their meetings in downtown Denver. And I just really dislike um, driving downtown Denver and in the building space, it's terrible parking. It's, you, you know, it's, it's just awful. Okay. And it was an awful experience. And so every time I'd be like, yes. And I'd sign up for it. And I'm like, Oh yeah. And then I'd be like, I would drive there and I'm like, oh, you know, like it was awful. And I was like, you know what? I've got to stop this because this is not serving me. It is not yeah. contributing to me. Yeah. I don't feel great. Like when I get there and I would shift the energy, of course, because I'd be like, I'm a, I'm an, extrovert right right? yeah fueled by people and it it would shift but i was like this is no way to live and i was like i've either got to shift the energy or stop coming or stop going and so Mm -hmm. i just chose to stop going and i was like you know what so that i see it come on my calendar i'm like it's okay it's absolutely okay that i'm not a part of that because it didn't serve me now interesting enough i think i think i i contribute to my powerful beingness they changed the location how funny several years later and i'm like I'm in, I'm yeah. in. And so now I attend this meeting and I love it because I don't have to like, it's it's just a different energy. So energy can shift and change and it's okay to say no in the moment, you know, yeah. love it. I think a lot of us are to just take it a little further, which ties into the work I do with people now, which is a lot of us have learned a lot of our behaviors from school. A teacher said to do, we do or we get a bad grade or we get a look from our mother's face, you know, that looks disappointed or disapproving or whatever. And we need to take that back. Like we're grown up adults, you know, that somehow still operate a little bit with like, Oh, I don't want to disappoint this person. Oh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to make waves and I don't want to, well, I don't want to disappoint me. You know, like if I end up in a place I don't like, or I don't love being there. I don't like the people. It's like, just don't do it you know, don't do it. Yeah. I I love that. And I think we need to echo that more and more because I think you're right. I think sometimes we have not sometimes most of the times we have taken these stories, these experiences, these relationships all the way forward. And, and, you know, with the, with the psychology background that you have is like, you know, those, those patterns and behaviors have been created by usually by the age of eight, you know, when our, when our brain goes online really. And it's like, Okay, so let's let's reclaim that. And I love how you just said that. It's just like, you know, we, we get to take back our power. Yeah. We're adults yes. and we get to take back that power yes. and really own what we are here to do. Because if we dim our light, we don't give anyone else's permission to, to brighten their light. So let's brighten our light so that we can have that magnetic, really powerful, you know, illuminary experience for others as, as well. So I just, I love it. It's powerful. So Sophie, I could like literally talk here all day with you. And then I just love it. I just love it. I love you. So let's do this. Um, how, what has been a, a tool or a tip or a strategy that you have found to be really powerful, really dynamic in your success story? There's a few. The one that comes to mind is to make sure that I take care of myself in the process. I think as an entrepreneur, it's very tempting to, as you were saying earlier, especially if you're competent, you just take more things and more things and more things. And again, Gay Hendricks, which I really refer to all the time because he he talks about the zone of genius, you know, like where am I really, not only am I good at it, but I love doing it is where I should spend my time. And too many people find their zone of competence and then they, they kind of ride that. It's like, well, I'm good at this. And we don't want to feel incompetent for the same reasons that when we were kids, you know, we were ostracized or mocked or humiliated for not or, or not welcomed. You know, like what you were saying earlier, it's like FOMO, fear of missing out is one of the big ones, you know, like, oh, I want to be at this event. I don't really want to be there, but not being there is yeah. worse somehow, right. you know? <laughs> And so to, I think taking care of myself has been a a guiding light because I can do a lot and I can do more. And at some point it's a little bit of like, who's, who's taking care of me? You know, who's this parent to myself? Um, So I know it's not a typical business, you know, do four hours a day or do, you know, work (laughs) standing on your head, you know, type of. Again, we all are connected. and, And if we're not taking care of ourselves, I had a great mentor and I was, I was that person. I was the. Yeah. Triple A, work, 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 
crazy hours. And um, I had a really good friend and mentor. And he had said to me, he's like, he said, you will not have, you will not have anything if you don't take care of yourself first. No. And it stuck with me because he's like, he's like, if you don't take care of your health, you don't take care of your wellness. He's like, it doesn't matter how successful your business is. You're not going to have your fulfillment in all these other areas of your life. And so exactly. you take care of yourself first, everything else is for a loss, you know? And so I was like, okay, so that those were words really resonated with me. And I'm like, okay, I have got to pull off the, I'm going to just, I'm going to um, just, you know, bring my foot off the gas pedal just a little bit, right? Just, I'm just going to ease up a little bit, you know? I'm not going to put the brakes on, you know, um, no, when I was I, no I, I, I the Teresa and I was uh, driving a race, uh, a NAS, a NASCAR at, for one of my adventures. And, and it was really interesting because they said, you know, you never put your foot on the brake ever. You only use the gas. You, you either put you your just, gas you in lower the, yeah. or you lower it. You know, it's just like, it's just easing up. It's just easing up on the gas mm. and, you know, and then you pumping when you want to pump. Yes. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so I think it's just like that, you know, again, like we don't have to, we don't have to put the brakes on it. We just have to ease up on it, you know? Yeah. And so. I like that. That's really yeah. good advice. So, I, and I think this is such a profound message, especially as we go into the new year. It's just a reminder. Again, you, it doesn't matter how, and you've, you've had a um, incredible you know, incredibly successful business. And so even folks that have experienced massive success are still giving the, you know, advice and recommendations to take care of ourselves. I mean, yeah. you're, you're hearing it straight from Sophie's mouth. Okay. everyone, <laughs> From the horse's mouth. <laughs> right from the horse's mouth. Um, so where can people connect with you um, and follow more and find out more about you? You know, the website is the best way. It's becurrenttoday.com, becurrenttoday.com. And that's, you can link to everything. I don't need to give you the whole laundry list. It's the usual suspects. You can find me <laughs> Perfect. everywhere. Perfect. I will, we'll, we, we have those in the show notes. Um, Sophie, this has been absolutely fantastic. Thank, Thank you Thank you so for much. having me. This was so fun. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I am so grateful that you joined me for this episode. If you've enjoyed this, then there's just one thing that I would like you to do. Click to subscribe and leave me a rating and review. As my way to thank you, let's connect for a free consultation. Just reach out to me at talkingwithterry, that's T-E-R-I dot com to book your time.